Question. What know. was the push? Well, you know, I've always loved rock and roll. I've always, I'm, music's my life, mm -hmm. you know. Although in England I'm in the scrap metal business, but um, my passion is music, always has been. And the bopper has a special meaning to you. He has, yeah, he's got a special place in my heart, actually. Um, when I was younger, say 17 years old, I first heard him, in, you know, in the 70s. And um, as soon as I heard the telephone and that, hello, baby, I thought, wow, you know, it was just something different, different than anything I'd ever heard. You know, in England, we had the Beatles, we have everything else, you know, Rolling Stones and that. But I've always been a Buddy Holly fan. You know, I've always been Richie Valance. I've always been that period. Um, and I remember, as a, like a 15-year-old kid, my first girlfriend dumped me, crying on the floor, mm. listening to like, you know, True Love Ways or something by Buddy Holly, just making things worse. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, whatever music there is, whatever mood you're in, there's a song for that mood, you know. And uh, yeah, it's uh, we don't realize it here in the states. We think, well, rock and roll came with the British invasion, but it's actually kind of upsurged here. Absolutely. No, no. I mean, this is where it started, you know. I mean, you guys had the blues, you had the rockabilly, you know, you had the country. And you just put it all together and we get rock and roll. These guys invented rock and roll, you know. Woody Holly, Richie Valance, the big bopper, you know. You, pe you see people today wearing leopard skin coats. Where'd they get that from? There's only one guy, you know. Um... <laughs> Life's full of distractions, isn't it? That's great, yeah, that, yeah. That's a good point, you know, we have all this going on. Yeah. What challenges, uh, you know, I don't want you to bad mouth Texas, but can you talk about why he hasn't gotten it? It's a fun oh, no. <coughs> Yeah, don't get me wrong, I mean, I wouldn't bad mouth Texas people. We're good. Texas people are amazing. You know, I mean, they've been, we've had some fantastic, we've had a fantastic journey. We've had nothing but kindness and politeness. And people say, you know, we don't know why he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why isn't he in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? They haven't even got a sign to his name. You know, there's not a street. There's nothing in Beaumont to say J.P. Richardson, the Big Bopper, even existed. You know, the only thing you've got there, go to the cemetery. They've got a marker on his, on his grave. But even then, that's, that's commissioned by Port Arthur, um, historic community, not, not Beaumont. You know, it's crazy. You know, there's, I mean, there's nothing there for George Jones either, by the way. And your observation? You know, <clears throat> this now has turned into something more than I could have envisaged. I mean, initially the film, I was going to meet Jay, his son. Um, we were meeting the family, you know, we we're going to do this, we we're going to do... Johnny Preston was going to be in the documentary. But unfortunately, both of those guys are no longer here. So it's fell down to my, on my shoulders now. I know I'm an Englishman and people in America might think, what, see, what you know, what rights he got to come here and say to us, you know, we should do this. I'm not saying you should do anything, but what I am saying is this guy deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You go to the surf ballroom, which to, to everybody, you know, is like the optimum. That's, that, that is the holy grail to any rock and roll guy, you know. And you go there and there's a plaque there donated by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which says, you know, these three geniuses, these, these three guys, it wasn't two guys, there was three. So how can they say that on a plaque and then they have two inductees in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and they don't have the big bopper? You know, J.P. Richardson, as I rather call him. I mean, he would use the persona big bopper for Chantilly Lace. But... Um, it pains you, doesn't it? It really does, yes. It, it upsets me. And it really upset me whilst I was in Beaumont. Um, and I went on the, the television and I explained. I said, you know, <clears throat> where I come from England, we have castles. We have stuff like that. Our history goes back thousands of years, but it means nothing to me. I can't relate to that sort of thing, you know. But music's my life. And this, you guys here, have got everything, you know. And the amazing thing is here, you come to Clear Lake, you go to the surf ballroom. It's just like stepping back in time. It feels it when you go in there. It just it, it gets into your skin. You know, the, hair, the hairs on the back of your neck go up and you think, wow. Yeah. I mean, I was in the green room the other day. I was on stage the other day, you know, and it's just, it's outstanding, it really is, you know, and I think, I think really it's, it's, it's like this, you know, it, we're all guilty of this. You have something, 
and you don't appreciate it till it's gone. Unfortunately, likes of the surf ballroom, you have done something, you've renovated it, and it's a marvellous, marvellous place, you know. But many other places that I've been to, you know, the original pig stand, where JP met Elvis Presley, where they used to meet, that's, that's derelict, you know. You know, the, the, the old Beaumont Hotel, where JP's last recording studio was on the Sky Room at the top, I visited there. It's derelict, there's nothing, you know, there isn't a sign, the Jefferson Theatre, where he brought the world record, playing 1,821 records over a five-day period, where he collapsed, you know. There's not a sign telling you about this. You know, it's crazy. The only sign that's there is the guys who have donated the money, the bankers and, you know, businessmen. They're not interested in, you know. I mean, it's your history and it's important, you know. It really is. Hey, yeah, great. Yeah. The... Um, when you talk to people, you know, you say, oh, yeah, well, there was a guy last night said, well, he was only one at one day. He doesn't deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know? Like, did you boom? Yeah, I said, well, okay, then you can say that. I said, well, what about, you know, Running Bear, Johnny Preston? Well, okay. did he write that? I said, yeah. Oh, well, okay. I said, well, what about White Lightning, George Jones? Yeah, well, what about it? I said, well, he wrote that. He did? Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, he made the first rock and roll video. He did. Where's the book? So I changed his perception. I yeah. changed his, uh, you know. And that is, and don't, don't get me wrong, until five years ago, I wasn't aware of this. You know. I really. What I couldn't believe whilst I was in Texas, uh, we went to Lamar University. And I was talking to people there, you know, early teens, 20, 30. And I'm talking about JP. They'd never heard of him. And I said, I can't believe that even in, it's your history. You know, even if they just said, look, this guy used to live in your town. This is what he did. You know, we should appreciate this. Uh, but then you say, Chantilly, oh, I know that song. I said, well, he's from here. Was he really? And then they started to get interested. And I was getting all the young guys getting interested, you know. And um, I've even got the family. I met the family there. And they're starting now to realize the importance. And I said, what's it going to cost to name a street? You know, J.P. Richardson Street. I mean, you come here, you've got Richie Valens, you've got, I mean... It's on in here. Yeah, they, you know... The, the respect is here. Oh, this is it. As I say, if anybody like myself loves music and they love to come and see where it began, this is the place to come. It really, really is. It's amazing. I mean, you know, we drove through a blizzard to get here. I wouldn't do that for anything, you know. Maybe as if my wife was in hospital having a child or something, I would, you know... It's kind of the big guy's way of showing you what they went through. Whoa, and, and did, that was they it. They didn't have heaters, they had all the would believe, and they didn't have the We were so pleased that we came into this, when we came in this way, and we saw, you know, the weather, and my friend who was with us, he said, you know, John, I'm pleased we're seeing this, because you can really realise now, they didn't have the heating system we had. They didn't have the four-wheel drive we've got. You know, these guys really, they had nothing to Bruce kept breaking down. I mean, we go out there for two minutes. You're freezing. You know, we're soft. But those guys, you know, and they performed. They got back on the bus. They went to the next destination. They went to the next destination. And you know what it is? If I was one of those guys, I would have wanted to go on the plane as well, I think. You know, I really do. Well, from what I've heard over the years, it sounds like the flu bug was running rampant. And yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Trying to get rested up. The big bopper had the flu, and that's why Will and Jennings give me a seat. Talk about that tour. You know, yeah, yeah. I think I think this has got to be on your bucket list. You know, if you're a music guy or woman, anybody in music, you know, doesn't matter how old you are, you must come here sometime in your life. It's a music shrine. Oh, it, yeah, that's I'm absolutely. I'm getting freaky just thinking about it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, people go to Lourdes, you know, uh, you know, uh, and to be fair, this is my Lourdes. I've been to Rome, you know, I've visited the Vatican and whatever, the wife, and it's amazing. But this is like that to me. You know, because, okay, music, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what mood you're in, there's a song for every mood. You know, you can be going through a tragedy, you know, you can be heartbroken, you can be happy, you can be ecstatic, you know, there is a song and there's a mood for everything. Okay, uh, one of the questions I keep asking, the phrase, hello baby, yeah. can be said anywhere in this 
United States, England. Yeah. And people instantly know the line. Oh, of course, yeah. It's an icon. It is. It is, yeah. And I've, I think that's the thing, what I can't get away with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. By their own admission, Chantilly Lace is voted amongst the top 500 rock and roll songs of all time. You know, most important songs of all time. You know, that's only one of his songs. And, you know... Talk about that storyline. About the Chantilly Lace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I spoke to Jay about this. And I asked him, because obviously a lot of people think it was a little risky and the, about the words, it could be this, it could be that. Jane Mansfield did a sort of answer song. Donna Dameron did another answer song. She did the actual one. It was on the J.P. Richardson label, which they released the year after. They weren't going to release the song, but they actually did release it, you know, because they thought, well, he'd want it released. And it's, it's a great song as well. And I have an original uh, song with that, yeah. So... Um, when I spoke to Jay about this, and I said, you know, Jay, I said, there's all this. And I said, what, what like can you put on it? And he said, well, you know, John, he said, I didn't know about my father till I was 15 year old. My mother never spoke about him. I mean, his mother remarried again, Titsi. And um, he said, the only time I ever saw any emotion was the time I said to her, you know, ma'am, the song Chantilly Lace, was it about you? And he said, the tears welled up in her eyes, you know. So he said that was the only time I really saw any emotion. So it's, it's amazing, really. It's, and I think it's like a lot of these songs, you can put your own take on it. You know? I mean, I used it for my scrap metal company in England to advertise my company. I changed the words, and it was a massive hit. People were coming to get me to sign an autograph, you know, and it was amazing. And that's when I really found the truth about the Big Bopper. Because then it was about three months it ran on the radio, and they said, you've got to do another one. So I thought, OK. So I looked, and the next tune I came up with was Running Bear. Mm-hmm. Out of all the thousands and thousands oh, of tunes out there. You know, oh, you know. And on the banks of the river, you know. Yeah. You know, and George Jones and the Big Bopper, they were on the backing track. They were the guys doing the hoo-hoo and clapping their hands. <laughs> so they were the two guys on, the, on that, you know, with Johnny Preston. They were big sound engineers there. Oh, they're, they're kind of like the time he also, he was a technician yeah. and he, yeah. he, he no. was a performer too. Well, Tommy signed the petition yesterday yeah. and he said to my friend, you know, and Tommy said, you know, the same again, this guy would have been, a, he, he was a genius and all he wanted to do, these guys did this for the money. They weren't wealthy guys, they weren't like the rock stars of today, you know. Mm-hmm. He never got a cent from Chantilly Lace, you know. Yeah, so they one hit and they can go to Mexico and return. This is it, you know, yeah, 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 that's right. But I mean, they did it because they needed the money. He wasn't looking, he, hey, you know, he wasn't the best looking guy in the world. You know, he wasn't one of these guys. He wasn't a David Bowie sort of guy. He wasn't, you know. But David Bowie, Elton John, all these, you know, the American guys, you look how they dress now. You know, like he said, and I got the original copy of the newspaper, the, the Disc magazine, when he said, this was a few days before he was killed, the future is video. He said, in the future, you'll be sat in your living room. This is 1959, by the way. Wow. And you will have a VCR, a video machine. And he, meant, he says video. You will have a machine by the side of your TV. And you won't have to only sound good. You have to look good. You know, he made the first rock and roll video. The guy was a genius. Yeah. He was a it's genius. People today from what he was saying in 1959. Oh, yeah. I think the, the first VCR came out some 25, 30 years after he's mentioned it, you know. We'd already made a video. You know, this guy was so of it. All he wanted to do when he was here, he already had a place in Beaumont for his record stage where he was going to, you know, build his studio. And he so wanted to come he in. was um, running uh, well and blowing up. From he was going stratospheric. Yeah. You know, this guy had, was heading to the stars. Well, he is there now. I always talk about the big guy's got a plan. Yeah. And do you think this music was just so rich and good that the big guy says, oh, you guys are done already? <laughs> we're going to move you along yes I, thing, yeah yeah, yeah you know you, you know I wouldn't be here today would I no. you know and the and surf probably wouldn't be here without that you've got it you know so they have left something that if they'd lived would never be here yeah. so they have, let, they have left a far larger legacy now than if they had lived 
talk about people that you see come to the surf that are yeah. still in the 50s, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, wow. And they're giggling and they're laughing. Yeah, but I mean, like, Richie's family's here. Richie Valance's yeah. family's here. You know, and it's just like talking to a friend and, you know. And they're so accessible and they, they love the idea that people still remember them. And like I said to Connie yesterday, I said, you know, like I'd lost my nephew young, which is a tragedy. But when you lose your brother at that tender age, who is so renowned, so well known, and now every year it is brought up again, it's fresh again, you know. And people are still like, oh, I'm sorry. And yeah, but they, lo they love it. And I think they love that, you know, they were appreciated for the music, you know. And I said to her yesterday, I said, my favorite song was, you know, Bluebirds over the mountain, seagulls over the sea, bluebirds over the mountain, bring my baby back to me, oh well, oh well. And she said that was her mother's favorite song. And she said, I had tears in her eyes. And I thought, wow. And it's just, and that's Richie Valance. There's no, you know, he's just got a guitar. And you just listen to that. And there's a purity in his voice. Because he was only 17, this kid. 17 year old. And he sang like that, you know. Today we have X Factor. We have all these shows. These guys had to be special. They had to be really, really special. You know, to come across the pond. I'm talking, I have a book. The Big Bop is on the front page of the biggest selling music magazine in England and who's on the page the big bopper mm. you know and I mean you know, you know we had other big stars but he was there and the next week he was there and there was a double page you know this guy you know he may have initiated that because he was a clever guy he was a clever marketing guy mm. you know but um, you we grieve sorry do you hope for inspiration from Beyond, I've, already, I've, I've, I've already got it. No, oh, I've got it. Well, I don't hear the voices. I'm not that far yet. Well, you, you, but I do feel, know well, you know, as I say, amazing things have happened. And every step of the way, I mean, you know, every time I've had slight doubts, if there's been a slight doubt in my mind, things have changed, you know. And one particular occasion... Um, I was in England on the night before and my wife said look this is getting crazy you know it's obsessive and I said well it's a passion she said you're obsessed you know we've been married 34 years and so I thought well you know it's cost a lot of money and it's a lot of time and I'm you know so I looked and I saw what Buddy has and other, you know, Richie has, and I just see that, that JP just gets left behind that little bit. So I wanted to dedicate something solely to him, you know. And so a friend of mine, Bob Ollie, Robert Ollie, he's a famous Northeast artist. And he's, you know, he's done paintings and sculptures and what have you. And the likes of Sting and, you know, Brian Johnson, ACDC, and lots of other people, and royalty have his stuff. And I've known Bob for 30 odd years. And I mentioned it to him, you know, and I said, well, I've got an idea, which I'd like, I'd like a guitar, and I'd like this, and what have you. So, leave it with me. So he came back with this design, and as I say, he designed it, and, you know, and he, he said... Did a little tweak here and there, maybe. Yeah, well, I did everything, yeah. I said, look at the music, and he did all that. And then I went to an engineering company um, who work for, you know, Harrods and places like that, that they do per perfection stuff. It's not just rubbish. And uh, so I want to say these guys, and they were great. You know, they, they, one of them's a musician. He says, oh, it's a Gibson, so so they did this. They put the telephone on it, and they made it out of stainless steel and bronze. I'm in the scrap metal business, so I want good material. And, uh, and that's my gift, because the gift I've had here, you can't buy that. What I've come here to do, and what I'm trying to achieve, you know, I was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the other day. You can't buy that. You know, I, in my normal life, this would never happen to me. I wouldn't be talking to you guys. I wouldn't have a film crew following me around for a year through Europe, you know, talking about this. And I mean, I was at a, I had a party in Spain and I had German people, I had Spanish people, I had everybody dancing and singing. These, you know, the German people are shouting, he is my favorite one, he's my favorite one, you know. And as I say, and really, when I came here, I went to boat, I was so disappointed because there was nothing about it. You go down to the Port Arthur Museum, they've got a fantastic museum there. And they have a beautiful bronze bust of him. They have a beautiful bronze bust of the three of them, you know. But Beaumont itself 
uh, you think you never existed. They got to get with the program. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, you know. The family, when I met them, his aunties, they were telling us at the time, you know, one of the aunties was saying, well, we learned, we learned him how to ski, you know, how to skate. Mm -hmm. They were one of the 2,000 people stood outside the Jefferson when he broke the world record, you know. Their mother was the one who told JP's mother that he'd been killed, you know. And you could see it was still fresh in their eyes. They were filling up with tears and, and but they were so thankful. I get emails now, just John, you know, thanks so, and I'm, I'm saying, why thank me? Thank him for the music. Don't thank me. You know, I, I'm not doing anything. All I'm doing is doing what I think is right. Jay wanted his father in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's not here. I've took his torch, I'll, I'll, I'll get him in. JP Jr. Yeah. that torch. Oh. Absolutely. You know, when I spoke to him, that was his life's ambition. You know, and I think what hit home with him, when he actually did a couple of these tours, and that really made him appreciate what his father went through. You know, it's okay we sat in a beautiful, warm environment here. You stand out there for five minutes, you know what I mean. You know, stand out there for one minute. I'm going to save your voice because we've got a big day ahead of you. Yeah, thanks very much. Cheers. Okay. Wonderful, thank you. you no. More than I need. Oh, that's great.